Good afternoon, everybody, and I'm so sorry for our late start today. I ran into some tech issues getting us launched here, um, but thank you for joining our webinar today. Um, today we are going to be hearing from Rydell Law Firm and the topic for the call. I'm so sorry, the topic for our webinar today is using AI for franchise. I'm so sorry, I'm very discombobulated this afternoon, um, but thank you for joining our webinar today. And if you are attending our webinar for CFE credit, you will attend CFE credits this afternoon. We do offer ongoing educational sessions for our franchisors and our vendor members, just like this one here today. If you are interested in learning more about our IFPG membership, you can send an email over to our membership director, Hira Mirza. Her email is Hira, H-I-R-R-A, at IFPG.org for more information. And with that said, I'm going to pass it over to Rydell. It looks like you are on mute there. There's a little microphone next to your name, Shalira, for you to unmute yourself. Ah, OK, OK. I guess it muted when we open it up. Um, yeah, yeah, so I'm Skyler, Rocky Rydell. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I'm the uh, founding attorney and uh, managing attorney for Rydell Law Firm. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to jump right in because I, I know we want to go over some some pretty big topics and show you some demos. So uh, today we're going to be chatting about artificial intelligence. I'm going to be demoing what I do in my law practice in the franchise space and how I use AI. This is a little rough outline of what we're going to do. So let's just start. Um, oh, and one thing, if you have questions, uh, send it in and ask me. I also have a digital download that I just shared with um, Ms. Christine here, which she'll either send it to you maybe in the in the chat box or maybe uh, by email or something. And that's just links to everything we're going over right now and some tips and tricks on getting started with AI. So, okay, so the underlying technology of, AI, of artificial intelligence right now as we're using it is based on GPT-3. So what GPT-3 is very broadly, it's a model. It is a model that, takes huge amounts of data and processes it, right? So it's just it's extremely complex algorithms that reads text and creates these huge databases of this text and what the meaning is behind it and makes connections and relationships between words and sentences and, and just everything, right, ideas. So that's the underlying technology. Where you're starting to see it now is chat GPT, which is real popular. Um, that is a layer on top of the GPT-3. So the stuff that I'm using are layers on top of GPT-3 as well. So there's all sorts of different flavors depending on what you're doing to use it. So why now? Why, why is AI hitting um, the world now, right? Why is it, it so popular? It's been around for a while. Obviously GPT, this is the third iteration of that. Um, it is, uh, so it's, it's every few years they release a new, <clears throat> excuse me, a new version. And it is improving with every version. And really, right around 2020, uh, which is when GPT-3 came out, uh, the accessibility and how good the model was to read data and process data into something that's usable really caught up to the promises of what AI, you know, what we see on TV, right, of what AI is in our mind. So it's finally catching up. It's finally usable. And even just from 2020 to now, 2023, we've seen usability and accessibility opened up from not just researchers and engineers and tech companies to now lay people, right? Lawyers, um, marketing people, copywriters. So all sorts of, of regular folks can take advantage of it now. And it's improving every year. It's awesome. So if you have any initial questions or initial interest uh, or something, Please put it in the chat box there and I'll have uh, I'll have it shared and, and we can discuss it towards the end. Um, so now I'm just going to run into some demos. We're going to show you what I do in my law practice. Now I use AI. So this first tool is called Della. This is Della Legal, DellaLegal.com. These are all linked, by the way, in the digital download you're going to get. So Della Legal is a uh, it is an AI review platform. So I work with them. Uh, I've used them for over a year now. When we first got engaged with Della, they did not have franchise agreements in their database. They didn't, their machine and AI didn't know how to process it, didn't know what a franchise agreement was, and we helped them teach the machine what it is and uh, how to make relevant, uh, usable outputs based on franchise agreements. So we've added data to their model. 
Um, so I'm gonna show you right now, this is what we do for an AI review. We add the franchise agreement, and we do this for all of our franchisee clients. Uh, it's not only is it, am I reading it, but the machine is reading it to double check my answers and to make sure that I'm not missing anything important. And what we've done here, so on this uh, left-hand side, this is my checklist. These are all the things that I find are important that I need to educate franchisees about. And I've formed it into, uh, these are basically questions that I ask the AI. How much is the initial franchise fee? And it comes up with what it thinks are the answers here. So a lot of the times it gets it right. So you see here, this is the franchise agreement itself. And Della has identified the answer. <laughs> the, fran the initial franchise fee is 35,000. So this is uh so this is a franchise agreement that I've written, right? This is a client of mine that I'm sharing, LA Crawfish. And I've never put it in Della before. So I did this about, I don't know, three hours ago. I just input it in here and let the machine run and it has gone through and answered all the questions that I've asked. So the royalty fee, uh, I just found that right there. The royalty fee is six percent. I check it, say, hey, that, that's the right answer, Mr. AI, Mr. Dell AI. Um, so let's go to something a little different. Um, business opening. So this question is, what is it? The when is how many days does a franchise have to open the business to the public? And there you go, right? Opening date. It, it knows right where to zero in and tells me the answer. We have uh, what is it? Six months after the approved location or 12 months after the execution of the franchise agreement. So it's a this A B answer there. So that's what we do. I, I do this every every day really for, for franchisee clients. We go through and review franchise agreements. We educate our clients about the terms and we highlight any issues, right? Or any concerns and we talk to the client about their concerns with it. Um, but this tool really makes it very efficient, very easy for, for me as an attorney to zero in on the critical terms, right? The critical obligations that my clients are gonna have to be responsible for and uh, we zero right in on it. To, we inform and educate the client. And then, you know, we, we address whether there's any mod potential modifications or anything like that. So just all sorts of stuff, right? Uh, death and disability, right? What happens upon a death or disability of a client or of a franchisee? Um, so that's the notice requirement. So that's not quite right, right? So that's, that's a little bit right, but there's probably a better answer. So here we go. Death upon a principle, a little bit ahead of that. That is and then disability. So this would be a two-part answer. I would I would add 15.8 to it. But that is an example of the AI. AI thinks this is the right answer, but really the better answer is this. And that's how we train this system. So the more data we put into it, the more reviews we do and the more checks we give it, the better the system gets. Um, so yeah, that's how we do it. You can imagine if you are an attorney or if you are in the franchise space and you have to review a whole lot of documents, um and zero in on key terms every single time this is a fantastic way to do it and the key here which i note in the digital download is that you need to systematize your workflow all of this all of this i had systematized this is all a, a checklist i had these are the key items you know obviously there's some flexibility as i'm reading it but those are the things you need to think about how to systematize your workflow for ai so let's move on to another one. This is less AI and this is more uh, document assembly, but it's a great tool. So this is based on doc assemble. And this is my doc assemble server that we're running. And what I've done here is I, I, we've created for our franchise or clients an FDD annual renewal questionnaire. So every year, as everybody I'm sure knows here in the franchise space, we have to update the FDDs and it's kind of a pain whole lot of data we have to, to crunch and just make sure and double check what is going on, right? And make sure that we can um, adequately uh, update and revise the FDD according to the statutory requirements and uh, legal requirements. So we've created a questionnaire. This is automated. You go through this. This We send all this to all of our franchisor clients, but this is open to the world. If you want your franchisor client to use this, tell me, I'll send you the link. They can use it for free and they'll get a really neat little output document I'll show you in a minute. But this is all they do. They go through and input their, um, oh, I guess I gotta give some answers here. They input their, their information. Um, 
that's not my real email, so don't send that. I don't know who that is, but <laughs> that's my initials. Um, but anyways, they go through and answer these questions. Oh, I gotta put it right there, I guess. I wasn't reading. Um, they go through and answer these questions, and depending on how they're answering, this system will tell you will ask for more data, right? It's gonna tell us, hey, we need this for the renewal, we don't need that. Um, you know, if you have your list of franchisees, you can upload it. Uh, we don't have anything to add, or yes, we do need to add some current franchisees, and it'll let you do that. Um, so it, it's really great. It makes it super easy for renewal time as it's coming up. And again, this is this is less AI. There are some AI aspects we could build into it. I haven't done that yet, but this is just a way to make my clients' lives easier. Um, and so once they go through that, this is the little output document, and it really zeroes right in on the items, the changes that we have and what those details are according, from our client, right? So if you need this, if your franchise or clients need this, uh, I'll send you the link, they can go through this, um, through this interview and get all the information they need for renewal, and then you guys can use it however you need it. It is gonna be branded, so it's gonna know it came from me, but that's okay. <laughs> so um, hopefully that is helpful, because that's always a big hurdle in the franchise world, so. Okay, so that is uh, document assemble. So let's move into oh AI research. So one other aspect, I know I'm going through these kind of quick, um, but write down your questions. We'll we'll talk about those towards the end. Um, but I'm going quick because I, I want to show you everything we do, right? Get, give you guys ideas. So this is a platform called Alexei. Uh, we've been using them for almost a year now too. So if I have questions that uh, that I don't know how to answer, and then which Sometimes happens, right? Uh, it's not often because I don't go to court. I don't have to really know a whole lot of extra stuff other than I do the same thing all the time, right? So I don't have to do a whole lot of research these days. But if I needed to, and occasionally it's come up, came up a month or two ago with a client, um, you know, I, I have at these at my disposal a flat fee AI research program that will scour the state databases, the state laws. Um, the, uh, oops, let me give it one second here. It will scour, uh, all the case law that's out there. So everything that is, uh, that could answer my question, it's looking for based on what I tell it. And it will come up with answers in a really neat little, uh, memo format so that I can be knowledgeable and, ex and explain to my clients what the issues are and what the key, uh, facts and, and, where we can go with it. So AI legal research is really fantastic. They can find tough uh, answers or answers to tough questions. Now, this is still in its infancy. It's not going to answer a legal question, right? Um, so a legal question as opposed to a fact question. Fact question is, is the sky blue, right? That's a fact. We, it's either true or not. Um, and you know, or it, it, what is the, the what is the law, right? But law is a factual question. It's, it's A, B, C. It's known. It is there. It's it's it is what it is. A legal question is, or and sometimes called a legal conclusion, is what you take. You take your facts, right? You take your facts. You take your law. You take the situation and you analyze it, and you come up with a legal conclusion. Um, and, and a legal conclusion would be, did somebody break the law, right? Or is this compliant or not? AI is not gonna give you a legal conclusion, not yet at least. Uh, that's where humans and lawyers are still involved, but it can give you the underlying facts, it can give you the underlying law and basis and framework for answering those legal conclusions. So this one, uh, we, we were asking about uh, franchisors with stop orders in California and the ability to uh, to sell or, or license or trademarks to third parties. And uh, really, it was a novel question. And there's not a whole, there's nothing really in regards to case law that even the AI found. But I figured I needed to run it. Of course, I, I chatted with some, some of my franchise attorney colleagues in California that they didn't know either. So we ran this and came up with, uh, came up with a lot of the basic law, but there's no case law on point which was, it's okay, right? That, that's, that, that is an answer. We know that there is no hard answer for this, right? <laughs> so we're advising our client that it's novel. There are certain things we would advise, of course, and, uh, and how, on how to handle it. But this really, I mean, look at this. This is, this is all the work that 
lawyers used to have to do, right, per question, <laughs> is find all this and answer it, and it's done. It's done in a day or so now, or less, and I can read it and zero in right into the statutes, right into the case law as necessary to get further ideas and figure out where I need to go to advise my client on the answers. So next, all right, let's move. This is going to be the fun part. So I know I kind of blew past those because it may not be relevant for some of the folks on the call, but this stuff right here is fun. This is probably very relevant for you guys as brokers or just anybody in business. There's some fun stuff here. So I'm going to go and show you the platform we use for our general franchise um, uh, drafting, I guess, or, right, or franchise marketing and, and AI's generated content. And the platform we use is Jasper. Uh, Jasper AI, I've been using this uh, uh, over a year now as well. Um, here's, here is it telling, giving me some headlines for this, uh, <laughs> for this webinar and an outline on some stuff. I didn't use all of it. And here's the kind of the marketing copy you probably saw at some point to get interested in uh, this webinar. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell, that tells the machine to ignore everything above this. So we're just gonna zero that out. And yeah, let's play with it. So this is, this is a, an AI platform that generates text. It generates data. This is based on the GPT model. There are, there's a level between it where the Jasper company has added their own database. They've added details um, in regards to telling Jasper what to do and how to create those outputs. So um, yeah, let's see. Let, so let's work on right in ADA for franchise sellers. So ADA is a, uh, a special, where do I go here? Power mode, here we go. So ADA is a framework here, this is it. And what this is, is, okay, yeah, it's the oldest marketing framework in the world, attention, interest, desire, and action. So let's put in a, uh, let's, let's find a, a franchise company. What, um, what's hot these days? I don't know, let's, let's try, how about baby, um, I don't know, cribs or us. I don't know if <laughs> that's not a franchise, but we'll see it. We'll see what happens, right? So baby cribs or us, let's say this is a company um, or what's the product? Uh, so this would be baby cribs that sing and interact with uh, your children. I don't know, with your kids, your babies. Let's just do that, babies to keep them happy and healthy. Uh, I don't know, let's leave it at that. Let's see what happens. And then let's say a tone of voice. So what's cool about tone of voice here in Jasper is you can tell it specific type of tone, right? You can also tell it to, um, to speak as somebody else, right? Uh, as if it's characterizing a person. So I don't know, let's, let's try Elon Musk. We'll see what happens here. Um, and let's add a little more. The more details you give it, the better the outputs are gonna be. So the, this is a baby crib that sings, interacts with, with your babies, keep them happy and healthy. Um, the cribs, let's say, uh, connect over the internet to keep you informed. The baby status <laughs> and diaper change needs. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see what happens. So, uh, in the tone of voice of Elon Musk, let's see what it comes up with. <laughs> so, it takes a few minutes. As you can see, this is kind of a silly example. Um, but here, it gives you that framework. So, worry. Are you not spending enough time with your baby? Cribs are us. Cribs that sings and interacts with your baby. Uh, that's not too creative there, but let's see what it has in the desire. Perfect for any new parent who wants to make sure their child is getting the best possible care. You can relax <laughs> when they're played with. Order yours. Baby Earth has a perfect solution. Not only will it keep it safe and comfortable, but also interact with them. Don't worry about being out of the loop again. So as you can see, I mean, it comes up with pretty decent um, details. Uh, so if there's any comments or, or information that you'd like to input here, let me know. And we can have uh, Miss Christine tell me here so that we can add it and try it. So that's an ADA for a franchise seller. Oh, go ahead. 
Oh, no, I was just going to let the audience know as well that everybody is unmuted. So if you did want to jump in, you just have to unmute yourself and then you could jump in verbally as well. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So please uh, interact. This is not all just one way. If there's anything we can try here, tell me and let's uh, let's test it. So jump in anytime. So, all right, let's try a framework for a blog post. Okay, so we're going back to focus mode. So here, this is where this is just your blank canvas. So let's write a let's write a, an outline for a blog post. Um, so write an article about the benefits of franchising in the childcare space. Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty brief. Let's do it in a um, empathetic. Let's try that tone and fun i don't know is that that makes sense yeah let's try it let's see so let's see what that uh and then basically right here you need to give it a command right so we are going to tell it um write an outline for a blog post about the benefits of franchising oh and actually so what i would what we should do here is we would have added a few benefits that we would want the machine to know um, <clears throat> excuse me. So let's tell it, uh, what is it? Um, building equity and ownership with a franchise. Oops, building equity in ownership. Freedom as a business owner. Let's say a support network as a franchisee. So you don't have to, um, you know, you don't have to structure this. That's what's crazy. You can just dump data, you know, de details in, data points, and then you can let it run. So let's see what, uh, so what we do here is, let me see if I remember the command. Is it uh, control, there we go, control enter. So there we go. That is, um, that's an outline for, a blog post about the benefits of franchising in the childcare space. So what you would do is, is after you've done this, after you have this framework, uh, write about franchising in the childcare space. Give it a command. Let's run it. Let's see what uh, we can come up with. So as you can see, and you can keep running it, Oops, uh, what is it, control J, ah, I'm forgetting my shortcuts here, I'm sorry. Um, so what you can see is this is gonna give you a framework, this is gonna be a bit general, and now it's already knows it's supposed to go to the next paragraph, so we don't need that yet. Um, it's obviously general, and it's getting you a start, right? What I love about this, and the way I use it in my firm is that I know what I wanna talk about, typically, because I'll have questions from clients, or it'll be something fresh in, in the industry that we want to address. And then we will, uh, you know, I'll have an idea for a blog post and I'll start writing. I'll have a general framework or maybe I'll ask Jasper to help me with an outline and I'll start filling in some details. But, you know, making those connections between the paragraphs, right? And filling in some of the details or, or some of the, uh, you know, foundation around the key points that I want to make. Jasper's just tremendous at that. It's fantastic. So, this is real low level stuff. I mean, I'm just showing you, this is totally off the cuff, right? I didn't plan any of this. I'm just doing it to show you how little you can start with and start generating um, content to, to get your blog posts out there to engage people on LinkedIn. I mean, there are a tremendous amount of workflows that they've developed. When I first joined, they didn't have all this, right? Uh, they have maybe half of it. So, you can write your, you can have Jasper help you with a personal bio. Uh, you can help it with a company bio. You can write email subject lines, um, personalized cold emails, right? That might be helpful for a lot of folks here. Um, marketing angles. So you explore what are some ways that we can market this product or service to people and get, get some ideas. Just a, a really tremendous amount of, of assistance that you can get. Um, so, yeah, so, oh, go ahead. Joe Michaels. Yeah, oh, thank you, Joe. How you doing? What, what does this cost? 
Uh, good question. So this, um, so I'm not selling you this. I'm just a user, but uh, I pay about 50 bucks a month. Um, maybe a little bit more, between 50 and 60 bucks a month. It depends on your how many of your users you have, and you also have a word limit. Uh, I think I have 50 or 60,000 words. I don't hit that every month. So you you can get started very affordably. Okay. So great question. It's very accessible. Um, okay, yeah, so let's try another one. Um, I want to start a new document so we don't have this tainting it. But uh, another cool thing that I, I've used this a bit and in franchise negotiations, and it's kind of fun because it will – uh, you know, I, I always have my points that I make, but it's always nice to get another brain involved to um, negotiate or, or critique something. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to just, uh, I don't, I'm not going to do a brief. Let's just, oh, you know what? So this, this is for generating documents. I'm going to go to the chat, actually. That might be a little easier. So one of the functions that Jasper has is you can generate documents, but they also have a chat function. So I can tell. I can chat with Jasper and um, and figure out what uh, you know what we want to do. So let's let's go here. And I've done this a little bit in negotiating. Um, so t let's say, tell me why a liquidated damages clause in a franchise agreement is uh, was it unconscionable or Oops. Uh, oh man. Wait, wait. I don't know. I don't want to start off too harsh to say is. Um, eh, let's just tell it's a problem. Let's see what happens. So this is an example of a prompt we can give the AI to tell us why. What are some points we can argue with the franchisor maybe about liquidated damages? I expect this will be really general, and then we maybe with with its answer, we can drill into some more um, into some more detail. Okay, here we go. So this is a little bit about what liquidated damages are. This is the problems. <laughs> it doesn't accurately, accurately reflect reality. That's interesting. Now, this is a true one. Many franchisors will attempt to use dam liquidated damages to deter franchisees from breaching the contract. They can take into do not take into account extenuating circumstances. Yes, that's true. So this is all this is a good start. Let's say, um, how can I reduce liquidated damages in my franchise agreement? Oops. Let's see. So again, I, I haven't used it for these specific questions. These are this is totally fresh and raw. But you can tell where I can jump in here, and if I hit a roadblock, maybe we've exhausted some of our negotiating points with fran with a franchisor, and you know it's going to take some creativity to overcome that hump, right? To get to a deal, get us to the finish line. I can come in here and brainstorm with Jasper about what what do we do, right? How do we negotiate this? Um, let's see what it says. So this is usually the uh, kind of an intro there. Make sure you all understand all of it. Negotiate a lower figure. Uh, this is somewhat helpful. Not really helpful for someone like me. Um, that's kind of nice. Yeah, that's a good point that liquidated damages potentially could be voided by a court if it's an excessive penalty. Um, and then it tells you to get a lawyer. I like that, <laughs> Jasper. <laughs> there you go. There's some live marketing for hiring a franchise lawyer, right? <laughs> um, so, so there you go. That's that's an example of me just pinging it with questions um, in regards to how do, how do I drill into some aspects of the uh, franchise agreement and how can I you know, how, how can I think about creatively ideas to get around it? And it, look, it'll, it'll give you prompts. So let's see what that does. This will, it will suggest prompts based on the questions you're giving it. So research each category of liquidated damages and their defined amounts. This will be interesting because it's not, I mean, in the franchise world, we don't really have defined amounts. 
specifically for liquidated damages because that it varies by system. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And then, okay, we'll have to explain a contract term next. That's what I want to show you. Okay, yeah, so this was probably too general really to be helpful, just what what are liquidated damages and how are they calculated. But um, okay, let's have it explain. Uh, let's, let's, let's pick something kind of difficult, let me think. Um, explain a, uh, what should we put in here? Um, uh, personal guarantee, I think it's too easy. Uh, oh, explain step-in rights. Uh, exp let me let me give a little more detail. Explain a franchisor's step-in rights in a franchise agreement. This one's kind of tough. Um, I don't know. We'll see if it gets this right. So step-in rights. This is where the franchisor, if you as a franchisee potentially are not. Uh, doing what you're supposed to, the franchisor can, they don't, they won't terminate the agreement, but they will step in to operate and manage your unit, your facility, and get you back on track. So, um, let's see. Mm, it might have missed the mark. Oh, here we go. Okay, so this is the relevant. So, step in rights, where they retain control over franchise store outlets in order to maintain brand standards and quality might be used if there's a disagreement between the parties on performance. Wow, I got it right. <laughs> yeah, and it can also be used for bankruptcy uh, if there's a bankruptcy pending. Whoa, so that is, uh, that impresses me. I would not have expected it to know what step-in rights are, which is kind of crazy. Because that's not, that's not something you see in agreements all over the world, right? Or, or in any standard contract. These are really particular for franchise agreements. And they're not even in all, all franchise agreements in the U.S. So that's awesome. That's really cool. So there you go. If you have clients, right, as a franchise broker or if you, as a, even a franchisor maybe, if you need to explain some aspects of your agreement or of the deal, <laughs> you know, you can pop in here and uh, generate that answer very quickly and, and usually Skyler? quite correctly. Skyler? Yes. Let's stay with that and let's put in a date. Uh, we we now know about step-in rights. How long does the franchisor have responsibility before I can come back and re uh, reoperate the franchise? Okay, yeah, let's 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 try it. So it'll be this will be particular to probably the agreement. Usually the agreements will will have some framework for that. But let's see. So let's how long would a franchisor's uh, step in, maybe I should do that as how they do it. Yeah, step in rights. Um, exist. I want to go to franchise orders. Yeah, let's see, exist. Let's say typically, I don't know. And let's see what happens. It's a good question. And th so th that's a complex question too, because right, mo almost always is it's going to be based on the particular contract in front of it. So, uh, okay, so, all right, that's interesting. So it's answering as if uh, the step-in rights, w whether it's only in the framework of the franchise agreement. So, right, w are the step-in rights only for the first five years of the franchise agreement? So that's a good point. We, we would have to clarify the question a little bit more to Jasper for it to understand, but that's what it's assuming. So it's telling us the step-in rights are for the duration of the franchise agreement, right? It's, it's, not, it's not understanding that we mean when, when they elect to use the step in rights. Um, let's see, the exact length of step in rights depends on specifics outlined, but they remain active until either party. Yeah, so it got the question right. So, so that's a great point about inputs, right? <laughs> so your output is gonna be as good as your input. And this can, if you're not very clear on your input or you could be clearer, it's gonna make assumptions and those assumptions may be incorrect, right? But running this, you can identify where you need to tighten up your questions, right? And tighten up your details to it. And you can run it again and, and get more precise and specific. So it's extraordinarily helpful in that sense. Um, 
Yeah, so we've done all the demos. One thing I, I just want to tell you about we're working on that's that we're not demoing is um, templating uh, smart contracts. And that there's a lot of work behind it. And, you know, ask me in like seven or eight months, I can probably demo it to you. But that's in the works, too. I'm a big believer in systems and making your life easier with technology. And the application of what is out there today is very accessible. It, it, it is there. Take the first step. Start learning. You don't have to be a programmer. You don't have to be an expert to do any of this. You just got to take the first step, trial and error, and start with small stuff. So again, these are some points in my digital download. Start with the small stuff. I didn't jump into AI contract review, you know, as a, right out of law school. <laughs> the first, um, the the first automations I did was automating my files. Uh, set up, right? I had a certain file structure that I wanted every client file to have and creating a script to do that every time. It saved me only, I don't know, maybe four or five minutes every time, but that adds up, right? After a year, two or three, that script has saved me um, tens or may maybe hundreds of hours at this point. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, I have to do the math. But start small. It's going to help you and then start systematizing your workflows and you are going to find ways to start utilizing AI and these different platforms in your workflow. So, so with that, I know uh, I, this was like blazing fast through the tools I've been using. I hope it was helpful and it's spurring some creativity in you guys, but I wanna yield back the time here we have. We have 10 minutes left. I want to answer any questions or point anyone in the right direction. So please um, ask questions if you have it or if there's any in the chat that I missed, uh, please share those. So, awesome. Rocky, thank you. Yeah, can you Sorry, talk? Bit, yeah, Rocky, can you talk a little bit about how to get started and and where do you start? You had mentioned when you joined, like, what does that actually mean? And um, do sure. you go to online or is that uh, under a bigger umbrella? How do you find this information? Yeah. So, oh, good, good question. So, Jasper, if you go to Jasper.ai. Uh, this will tell you, you know, what they do and you just sign up, right? You sign up. It is a software as a service. So it's a service that you can pay for just like, um, you know, Microsoft Office, right? 365 or whatever. Um, but so to, Jasper is probably the easiest to start with, but you still and you can get on there and play it. I think you, you can get a free account for, you know, a thousand words or something uh, uh, and play with it. But you can you can start testing it and using it and get ideas for what you want to do with it. Um, now, beyond kind of content generation AI and asking questions like with a chat type of chat bot, you really got to start systematizing what you're doing. So you need to take your workflow and figure out what is your system? What are you inputting? What are your outputs? And I, I know I'm kind of being general because it, this can cover a whole wide variety of industries. Um, and you need to figure out what checklist do you have? What will you tell somebody who needs to replace you, right? What, what is the job workflow for somebody that needs to do what you're doing? And obviously that's a huge scope of things, but as you start identifying areas that you can automate, you can very, very likely systematize what you're doing. And in regards to, there's AI um, platforms out there now that will check your email, right? And you basically, you gotta tell your, this. AI email checker, what keywords you look for, like what do you spot check, what who do you, what are you expecting to see and what key points of data do you need to pull out? Is that dates and names for meetings or is that contract terms that you're negotiating or something? So um, just starting small, right? Starting with those little, little ideas of where you can, where can I automate something or what, what is systematized already that I do the same thing every day? and start start outlining, right? Start putting it on paper. And uh, I, I think that will help, that'll get you there. If you have, you know, and, and if, feel free to reach out to me anytime if you have deeper questions on that. So I know, it, I hope that's helpful. I know it's very broad because I don't know what industry everyone's in joining, but it's that that's what I have done is I saw what I do every day and I saw the repetitive nature of certain tasks and brainstormed how do I take myself out of the equation where I'm doing less work and somebody else isn't. And maybe AI is not the answer, but maybe a, maybe a virtual assistant is better for you for some things. But 
Um, probably AI, AI can work for quite a bit. Thank you. Can you use this for uh, email and document search? Uh, so you, uh, yes and no. The, not, these platforms that I use don't do that. Um, now, Della does have search built into their, it, it is, right? It searches this document, this franchise agreement, and it finds answers. Um, but there are better platforms out there. If you if you have a huge database of contracts or something and you need to, to understand the higher level of, uh, of what these contracts say and what they're doing, Della is not going to be the best platform. There are other ones out there that I'm, I don't, I'm blanking on the name uh, of, of a few of them, but there are ones out there. And they, they basically just take this huge database. They do what Della is doing, but they do it at a little bit more general nature, not as thoroughly as I am, right, with my big giant checklist here. Uh, but it will do it for thousands of contracts, and then you can get a big summary of gaps in your contracts, right? If half of your contracts have personal guarantees and half doesn't, it's going to tell you that and it's going to, you know, will help you find solutions based on, on, um, on that data set. So there are ones out there. I'm blanking on the names because I don't use them. I don't usually have those huge data sets, um, but th those are like enterprise level stuff and they can do a lot. That's for sure. Uh, good question. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. awesome. Um, we do have one other question um, for you, Skylar. Jerry asked, Right Sonic is another service like Jasper. Are you familiar with them at all? And uh, if what so, was the what name? is the difference? Say it one time. Right Sonic? Right Sonic. I have heard of that. I've never used it. Um, I feel like a good a colleague of mine uses it. Um, right Sonic. Let's find it here. So I don't I haven't used that one. Um, let me just search it so I don't get it wrong. I have not used that one, so I don't know the differences. Yeah, no worries. And then Jerry also just said, uh, right Sonic is less than 200 per year for five users. Um, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, so the price point there is different. I don't know. Um, you know, you can compare the features, but yeah, they got quite a lot there too, um, which is neat. You know, I don't know if they, Jasper does a lot, and it might be more than you really need. If, if you know you only need very specific, uh, tools and these tools are there, then, you know, try it. And what's interesting is, is these are, these are big, I, I don't know, again, I don't know right Sonic, but I'm 99% sure they're based on the same foundation. They're both based on chat GPT uh, or excuse me on GPT three, rather that's the underlying foundation for both of them. And Jasper has their own little flavors that they've added on top of it. And probably right Sonic has done the same too. So uh, yeah. So, I mean, you, you find the right platform for you and what you need to get done. I like Jasper personally because it is very versatile. I have multiple users that we do different things with it, um, with from content to you know brainstorming negotiation and, and figuring out ideas uh, uh, in a transaction or something. So a lot of good stuff on both sides. Awesome. I don't see any other questions. Um, if you guys do have any, you can throw them in the questions box um, or you could jump in verbally as well. Um, and also, if you do have any questions after the call, you can always reach out to me. I'm happy to connect you with Skylar as well. Um, but thank you, Skylar, for taking the time to jump on with us today. Great demo, Perfect. awesome presentation. Um, thank you. Thank I you hope everyone this was helpful. For jumping. Yeah, Definitely. I appreciate everyone joining and, and taking the time to, to sit in with us. Um, please reach out if I can be of assistance or you find it interesting and want to chat. Uh, again, check out my digital download. I'll have some some articles and some key points uh, that I think will be helpful. And um, yeah, I'm always happy to chat and help try to point you in the right direction. So yeah, and I'll, I'll give the last, you know, four or five minutes here if there's any final questions. I don't see anything in the questions box, but like I said, everybody is still unmuted. Um, so please feel free to jump in the question. I mean, jump and unmute yourself if you did want to jump in. Um, but I know we are at the top of the hour. So um, yep. again, thank you for jumping on and thank you, Skylar. And I hope you guys all enjoy the rest of your day. Again, my apologies for getting the start a little bit late here, um, but I'm glad we got to jump on and get some good content in. So again, thank you all and enjoy your afternoon. Definitely. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.